Well, for more on sports academies, I'm joined by Mark Tanner, Managing Director of Marketing and Research Firm, China Skinny. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Rochelle. Great to be here. Now, Mark, let's start by looking at the landscape here. Which countries are experiencing the largest growth of these sports academies? Well, I think America's always been the, the traditional market for sports, um, not just from a China perspective, but globally. Um, a lot of aspiring athletes will go to America for their sheer investment and expertise in, in sporting. But domestically in China, there's, there's a number of uh, large um, facilities that have opened up in the last few years, particularly down south with the uh, CBA um, Basketball Institute in Dongguan and then the Evergrande um, fo International Football School uh, down in Guangzhou. Now, Mark, speaking of football, if you factor in the global fan base, number of professional leagues, viewership, and the countries represented, most sports sites rank football or soccer, basketball, cricket, tennis, and athletics as the most popular sports. But which sport is seeing the biggest growth right now? In China, it's NBA or basketball in general is, is going gangbusters. Uh, it's about 300 million uh, fans of the sport, um, helped by obviously Yao Ming and, and some of the uh, some of the, the Jeremy Lin's of the, of the world, and also a lot of tie-ins with the likes of WeChat and Weixin um, that you, you can directly watch um, streaming NBA games. But I, I would I think that soccer is going to take over in, in the next few years. Just the sheer investment from both the government, Xi Jinping's little personal interest, and also uh, some of the uh, big corporates and billionaires are getting involved, both Adidas, Nike are right behind it, and then the likes of Alibaba, Wanda Group. Um, we, I think they're going to drive football or soccer um, a now, lot in the next couple of years. Now, Mark, as you mentioned, some of the big names, also social media and other, country, other um, corporations stepping in. And in countries like China, the government is really stepping up these initiatives to promote sport and also groom young talent. How support is having that government support and growing? I think government, for anything in China, if the government's behind it, it adds impetus to um, any industry. So I, once the government was behind it, and obviously they're hoping to increase participation in sport, they see the, the social, the economic, the um, soft power, and, and the patriotic um, benefits from it. Um, so they're driving that, and, and we're seeing the corporates following. We're seeing billionaires investing significant amounts, both locally and uh, acquiring talent and teams abroad. Now let's also look at it from the parents' perspective. When you have your children, you're looking at this cost-benefit analysis. So given the expenses that can be related to some of these sports, which can rank into the thousands, when you look at how much you're spending on these academies, how much of an edge do you actually get if you want to become a professional? Well, I, I don't think it's just about being a professional. A lot of these parents are seeing it as a, as a development um, investment, um, trying to get their kids well-rounded. Um, obviously, so many of them have one child, so they don't get that, I guess, teamwork, um, the things that you would get by default with siblings. So they see sport as a way to, uh, to really help that. Um, they also, if you look at the amount of parents sending their kids overseas to study, last year it was about 525,000, and the majority, or about 300,000, went to America. And they see sports as a way to, I guess, fit in a lot better into American culture and have a richer experience, integrate a lot better. And so they're investing in, in sports so their kids will, will get that. So it's not just about grooming elite athletes. It's about making sure their kids are well-rounded and, and ready for the world. Right. Now, so as you mentioned, this, this holistic approach of trying to make a well-rounded child, but lots of professional teams actually do already have their own academies serving as a real pipeline for talent for those who do want to turn pro. So just quickly, what would you say are some of the key benefits that these academies that combine education can really bring to the table? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, if you look at, at the Yao Ming effect, um, what that has done for NBA, if you can groom a lot of these up-and-coming Chinese stars to, to succeed internationally. With it comes all of the merchandise, the marketing, the, the events, the, the massive um, incomes that come with a supporting Chinese support, their own that are doing well. You see it with Li Na in tennis. And relatively, China doesn't have a huge amount of globally successful athletes, so they 
then that will change. But so a lot of these teams and associations are investing in that purely from a commercial point of view and purely to to grow participants globally. Well, definitely something to watch. We'll have um, to leave there, it there. You're seeing, um, I'm sorry, Mark, we're, we're out of time there, but we'll, we'll definitely be checking back with you. Mark Tanner, Managing Director of China Skinny.